Welcome to Slaying Excel Dragons video number 12. These are the videos that accompany this book and we are in chapter 5. Let's look at the topics for this video. We're still in chapter 5. Order of operations for Excel formulas. In this video we'll see how Excel formulas are evaluated. And in fact, the, we'll see the order in which formula elements are calculated. As we saw in our last epic formula video, there are a lot of different things you can put in to formulas. And so it, the order in which they're calculated is very important because it's not left to right. Let's go over to our Excel workbook. Excel is fun start. That's the workbook we're working in. You can always download this by clicking on the link below the video. And there is the sheet we're working on, order of operations. Now, we need to distinguish between two things. There's math order of operations, and this is where most people's errors when making formulas come from. And we'll talk about this more extensive list of Excel's order of operations in just a moment. Now before we look at these, let's come over and on this sheet, math operators. I just want to remind ourselves, here are our math operators, parentheses, exponents, multiplying, dividing, plus and minus. We'll look at these comparative operators later, but these math operators and the order of operations the order in which math expressions are calculated are the things that cause people most trouble when creating formulas. Now this is the hierarchy. You've got to do parentheses first, uh, all of them, everything inside the parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division left to right, adding and subtracting left to right. Uh, one way to m memorize it is please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, multiplying, dividing, adding, subtracting. These are left to right. Let's go look at an example. I'm going to scroll over here and zoom way in on this. All right, so let's just take a little vote here. 8 plus 2 times 2, is it 20 or is 8 plus 2 times 2, 12? All right, so everyone that thinks this is 20, raise your hand. And I'm raising my hand. All right, now everyone who thinks it's 12, raise your hand. Now I'm raising my hand. <laughs> I get to vote twice, right? Well, let's just see. Excel knows. Excel does not make math errors, so all you got to do is type this in. 8 plus 2 times 2. Control Enter. I guess it's 12. And the thing is, is Excel knows the order of operations. So if you are going to, if you think that the answer should be 20, that means you don't know, and then your formulas won't come out correct. So because Excel knows, you have to know too. All right, um, how do you get around this? Um, or how does this calculate? Let's just click in the cell and do Formula Evaluator. Up on the Formula tab, there is Formula Evaluate right there. You click the keyboard shortcut. I, I always use an old one from earlier versions because it's tough. Alt-T-U-F. Alt-T-U-F. And there we can look. Right there, there's an underline. That means I'm going to do that one first. So Excel sees that multiplication should be done before um, adding, even though it comes after in the left to right math expression. So I click Evaluate. Oh, it got 4, and then it adds. So that's why it's 12. Escape. Now, what would you do in order to get 20? If you really wanted to add these first, you would simply do equals and then parentheses. Remember, those are at the top of the order of operations. So 8, 8 plus 2, close parentheses, times 2. And now it'll do 10 times 2 is 20. Alt T U F. Alt T U F. And then you don't have to click this value, you can just hit enter. Now notice the underline says, I am going to do adding first, because the parentheses come first, and then 10 times 2 is 20. Now here's a common everyday example of when people make this mistake. You have beginning quantity, end, and then value, and your, your goal is to um, determine cost of goods sold. That means this is an inventory question. So really we want to say uh, 10 minus 3, that means there's 7 left on the shelf and they're valued at $5 each, so it should be 35 And this is what people do. They go, oh yeah, begin minus uh, end, 
times the value. Now I've actually gotten this question uh, a couple times in my Excel life where people uh, say, yeah, Excel is not calculating correctly. What's wrong with Excel? It's really us. We don't know the order of operations. Ooh, minus five. That means we have a, the, the inventory is so bad we have to pay people to take it away. No problem. The way you get around this is you do the subtraction first. Okay, in parentheses and then multiply it times that 5. And there we have our 35. Now that's just the math operating uh, order of operations. Let's just take a look. Um, this list, you don't need to memorize this. You do need to memorize this though. Just four things, okay, please. And then it will make your Excel formula life easy. This one you don't have to worry about so much. If you get into trouble with a formula, just come back and look at this list and it will tell you the hierarchy. Now look at this. Parentheses are at the top, right? But then colon, oh yeah, because inside of a sum, right, it's got to evaluate that A1 to A4. So then it gives you the numbers. Intersection, now you're basically never going to see this. I do have an example down here if you hit F2. If you type a range and another range with a space in between, that space says, please find the intersecting value. So that one, come, you'll basically never see that. Unions, oh yeah, because sometimes in a sum function, we already saw this once earlier in this, you have multiple items. So right here, a union, if I hit F2, that's all of that is. It's got to, before it can do the adding, it's got to find all the values there and all the values there. Negation is the next item in this uh, hierarchical list of how Excel calculates. Usually we think of this as minus, but it's actually um, negation, and it is a unitary operator, which means it always acts on the item directly after it. So in this case, minus 2 is raised to the fourth power. That exponent means, I mean, that caret means exponent. So instead of 2 raised to the fourth power, which is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And then you take the opposite of it, minus 16. Forget it. That minus is attached to the 2, so it's really negative 2 raised to the fourth power. If you really wanted the opposite of 2 raised to the fourth power, you put a minus sign in front. Here's another um, item. People might be crazy and type a percentage directly into a formula. Let me just show you what happens here. Because as we learned in our number formatting section of this uh, book, that's a formatted symbolic representation. So when I enter it in, the formula actually calculates it to show 0 0.01. Exponents come next. This, um, as we saw up here, exponents mean raised to some power. So 3 squared, or 3 raised to the second power, means 3 times 3. And of course, that's 9. You can also do root. Now, in this book, we're not basically not going to do any roots. In finance, we do lots of roots. So one, there's actually a square root function, so you wouldn't have to do this way. But 1 to the third power, one, 1 divided by 2, or 1 divided by 3, or 4, or 5, that would be a root. So the second root of 4 is 2, because 2 times 2 equals 4. Notice we'd have to put the division in parentheses to force it to happen before that uh, carrot. Then we have multiplying and dividing left to right, adding and subtracting left to right, and then ampersand. Now we already saw this, right? We saw how ampersand could join a comparative operator and a number, right? And so that's way down the list. Um, right at the bottom, though, are, are comparative operators. If anything else, then left to right. I actually uh, got this list from one of the best books ever, Managing Data with Microsoft Excel by uh, Carl Berg from Q Publishing. Totally awesome. All right, um, we want to look at the sheet 000 for order of operations. I'm going to click on that. And we want to look at another example of uh, how Excel calculates formulas. Hey, we have some expense uh, sales, expenses, and a profit hurdle. And our question is, is 500 minus $392 greater than 100, true or false? Now, we could, of course, calculate a profit uh, formula, which, of course, would be very common. But in this case, that's all we have. We only have access to these two numbers, and we just want a quick true or false. So how would we do this? We'd say equals sales minus expenses 
is that greater than our profit hurdle. Now we've seen, I think this is the third logical formula that we've seen, and it's going to give us true or false. The question is, how does Excel evaluate it? Well, there's a minus and a comparative operator. Well, we just saw on our list, uh, comparative operators all the way at the bottom. So of course, it's going to calculate this and then that. True. Now, of course, we could change this, right, 700. And then there it says false. I'm going to control Z. Now let's take this one, let's go ahead and um, evaluate this either right there or Alt Tuff, T U F. And we can see if I click evaluate, it's doing the subtraction first. Beautiful. And then the comparative operator. True. Now we want to take this one step further. We would like to have the word, we don't want true or false, we want yes or no. So actually, two different words, one of two words in the cell. Now think about this. What what do we, if we were just saying this in plain English, we would say, um, is the profit, which is that subtraction we do, greater than the profit hurdle? If that's true, I want the word yes in the cell. Otherwise, I want the word no in the cell. Anytime you have one of two things that are going, then a can go into a cell, or later we'll see one of two things that go into a formula, you can use the if function. The if. Remember, if we set it in, in regular language, if our profit is greater than the profit hurdle, then yes. Otherwise, put a no. So the fact that we speak the way we do with the word if is the reason they uh, name the function if. So anytime you have two, one of two things that go in the cell, you can use the if function. Equals if. Now, the way it works is there's a logical test. Now, by this time in the class, um, they just renamed what we've seen as a logical formula, right? That is always the hardest part to the if function. It's creating the logical formula or logical test. Well, for us, we, we know we can uh, create that pretty easily, so let's do it. 500 minus uh, 392, is that greater than the 100? Now check this out. The beauty of this logical formula is it can only do one of two things. It only delivers true or false. That's the definition of a logical test. Something, some expression that comes out true or false. The rest of the if function is super easy because it just says, hey, what do you want in the cell if it's true? And then what do you want in the cell if it's false? Because this thing only comes out true or false. So let's type a comma and get to the next argument. Value if false. Now I'm going to click right there. Value if true. Comma, value if false. I'm going to click right there. Sometimes in this situation, if it's always yes or no, you don't really need to put it into cells because our rule for formula inputs is if the thing can change, put it in a cell. If it never changes, then don't. So you could actually do it this way also. And I'll do my F9 trick to evaluate that. Notice that when I click evaluate on a bit of text, because it's looking at the cell. Watch this. Double click that. When I hit the F9, which is evaluate, it knows that inside a formula, the only way you can put text in a formula is double quotes. All right, I'm going to close parentheses. All right, now let's look at another example. Um, don't forget, though, you can do it one of two ways. I'm going to leave it like this. That was just a cool little trick there. Now, this question is different. We have a bonus, right? Pass the hurdle, get a bonus. We said true, we said no. Now, we don't want logical uh, value or a text value. We want a number value. So you either get $10 or you don't. $10 in your pocket or zero. All right, so we're going to use that same if to put one of two numbers in a cell. So equals if, I'm going to say, boop, logical test. Hey, we got to take our sales minus our expenses and say, is that greater than our hurdle? Logical test, that's usually the hardest part. Remember, the rest of the if function super easy. It's just, hey, what do you want in the cell if it's true? Comma, what, if you, what do you want to put in the cell if it's false? Close parentheses. 
Control Enter. Look at that. True, yes, 10. Now I'm going to add some formatting. Control Shift 4 for currency. Now watch this. We can change all this, and I got to show you a cool trick here. In the class so far, we've seen 700, and if I use Control Enter, it puts the thing in the cell. And then I can do something to it, like copy it or format it. Notice, how many cells did I have highlighted when I typed that 700? One. What happens if I highlight more than one cell? Now, um, notice anytime we highlight a cell, if we start typing, it's going to replace whatever's there. That active cell, that light colored cell right there is the active cell. The rest of them are not active. But if I start typing 700, notice it automatically replaces it. Now, here we had one cell highlighted and I control enter. Anytime you have lots of cell, more than one cell highlighted and you put something, whether a number, a word, or a formula, if you do control enter, it puts it into all the cells. So now we have a big bummer. We don't get the false, no, zero. Let's go ahead and I want to evaluate um, with a formula evaluator. This one, Alt T U F, and I'm going to hit Enter. Remember, you could hit evaluate, but I'm going to hit Enter, Enter. I can see it does the subtraction, then it does the comparative operator. Oh. The if sees a false, and so now it's going to grab that one right there in its next uh, um, enter. Let's do the same thing here. Alt T U F. One, two, it goes the minus. Then the comparative operator, it sees a false, and then it's going to give us uh, a zero. Actually, let's do the 392. I'm going to come over here, Alt T U F just so we see a true. Uh, uh, there's the true, so now it's going to get whatever's in G4. All right. OK, so that was a little bit about math operators and Excel's order of operations. And we saw some examples of how formulas are evaluated and in which order the formula elements are calculated. All right, in our next video, we'll see uh, some different ways to get to put cell references into formulas. All right, see you next video.